very complicated uh, statement yeah i understand okay i've tried to make a picture yeah may or may not help you all right so what are the ingredients uh, these ingredients are pretty simple we are used to this kind of thing v is positive semi definite v dot is negative semi definite for x in some set what are the sets first we have the domain d which is marked in red here this domain is like i said the ball of radius r where everything is happening yeah my solutions are not even escaping this basically d is this outer set now we are saying that uh, there is this omega set which is compact and invariant <coughs> inside the domain what is compact and invariant means closed and bounded yeah so any disk less than equal to any norm ball all of these are compact invariant sets because they are closed and bounded and these are examples of compact invariant sets in real yeah okay so closed and bounded is pretty obvious so omega is such set a uh, such a set also it has to be invariant which means if solutions begin inside the set omega they don't escape the set omega hmm? so i think again examples are things like these okay so uh one question do you think this circle that is the set omega okay this is obviously invariant right just by the equation is it compact is it closed and bounded boundedness is obvious i hope because x1 square plus x2 square is c i know so i am asking you so boundedness obvious i hope because x1 square plus x2 square is c so both neither x1 nor x2 can go to infinity boundedness is obvious compact do uh, sorry uh, closed closed is it closed is it closed compact means closed plus bounded so bounded is done what is is it closed is this a closed set is the circle a closed set how do you define a closed set contains all its limit points or supremism or whatever ha huh, fine is it a closed set hmm? Hmm. 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 then that is only telling you it is not an open set doesn't say it's a closed set <laughs> how do you prove anything is a closed set how do you prove any set is a closed set we, ne we never prove every anything is a closed set we only know how to prove open sets then what do i do now its complement should be open is the complement of the circle open in r2 huh? in all this big space complement of the circle is everything leaving the circle out inside and outside ah huh? is it open yes very simple because i can take any point here i will make my screen very big and i will draw a circle <laughs> that is not going to hit this i'll draw a set which is not hitting the circle so give me another point here i i can't make my screen any further big but yeah i can draw another open set complement is open ha huh? this is how you prove you never prove anything is closed you prove that the complement is open okay the other way if you if that is also very obvious is that if you look at this this is actually the set f inverse c where f is or v inverse of c where v is this v inverse of c v is a continuous function a single point set c containing only c is a closed set any set with only limited number of finite number of points is a closed set so v inverse of c is closed by openness by by continuity okay that's the other argument 
but that's a more complicated argument if you're not used to but but it is actually not a complicate complicate argument continuous set uh, image is single point it's a closed set any single point set is a closed set okay so v inverse of c has to be closed okay so the circle is a closed set so it is a compact and invariant set huh? it's the kind of set we want for lasalle invariance okay all right great okay so we have a closed and bounded set omega now inside it there are more sets okay what is the first one the first one is the set e which is basically all the points in omega where v dot is exactly zero so that is probably something like this the important thing to notice is that omega is an invariant set sure okay we have already assumed it and inside omega there is e but e is not necessarily an invariant set i hope that's obvious yeah i can all you cannot make an arbitrary set inside an invariant set and that say that is also invariant yeah for example uh, in this circle i can't say that this is invariant this piece i can't say this piece is invariant obviously because uh, i could be moving around in that circle i'll get out of the set very easily right so just because i have an invariant set doesn't mean every piece of that invariant set is an invariant set okay so e is not an invariant set i mean more often than not it will not be an invariant set okay so what do we do yeah, lasalle invariance just work with invariant sets loves to hence the name lasalle invariance principle okay it finds the largest invariant set inside that set okay and the claim is that if if v is greater than equal to 0 and v dot is less than equal to 0 then you will converge to this invariant set m okay this largest invariant set m you will okay obviously there must be a reason why such a claim is being made and we will look at the proof which i promise you is complicated uh, but we will look at the proof uh, these are the only few um, proofs like this we do that is the end after that no more proof yeah after that it's uh, results and uh, examples and uh, design and so on huh? so only three proofs actually so so all right so we will look at this proof because uh, non linear folks will kill me if i don't give that proof in a non linear control course no okay all right great uh, so these are the sets pretty straight forward if you start inside omega notice i am not allowed to start anywhere in the domain hmm? i am starting inside the omega set the, because the point is uh, lasalle wants to restrict all the trajectories inside that invariant set so you start in that invariant set so obviously you are not roaming about in this random domain you are within this invariant set and then you construct the e and the m so you are saying that i move from the larger invariant set to the smaller invariant set okay if v is greater than equal to 0 and v dot is less than equal to 0 so without the use of lyapunov candidates even i have a pretty solid thing going okay pretty strong result is what i would say so uh, before going forward what i would like to do is directly go to this example once let's see hmm? this okay let's look at this system okay now this is not done very properly here so i will write a few things hmm? uh what is this this is the pendulum this is the standard non linear pendulum not the modified one that i gave yeah this is the standard non linear pendulum ha huh? and and if you look at the analysis it's pretty straight forward k is the k is your whatever i or i mean it is just a normalization nothing more k contains the length and all that ha huh? c is the damping factor on the joint ha huh? and so uh, if you look at it this is the again the kinetic energy because it contains the theta dot and this is the potential energy we actually saw this and if you actually compute v dot so v is actually positive definite in an open ball but i am going to say it is only greater than equal to 0 i am going to invoke the lasalle invariance not the specialized results not this so i know it is greater than equal to 0 i hope you believe me it is semi definite for all x1 x2 So, so I'm going to say for 
x1 in uh, I'm trying to see what the domain should be okay so x2 in uh, R is fine but in x1 what do I want to say if I say 0 to 2 pi I have a problem because I'm missing this guy then what do I say minus pi to pi will contain this guy but it will not contain the uh, minus pi no minus pi to pi will not contain the top point yes. how do I make sure I can I have both of them I will have to take say minus 2 pi to do that huh? so this will make sure I have the bottom uh, one also and the top one also huh? 0 and pi both okay. both equilibrium okay because I want to make limit set no so I want to sort of have some kind of a limiting behavior huh? so let me see let me see what happens okay right right okay okay uh, and x2 can be in r huh? this is uh, conservatively the the domain huh? this this whatever I have stated now is the d set uh, because this is not uh, uh, can this be the omega set also I guess this can be the omega set also but the problem is it is it would have been okay but it is not a bounded set hmm? so it can't be the omega set it can be the d set but if I want something bounded then I have to choose some bound here hmm? all right all right uh, how we typically choose the bound let's let me be honest how do we create the omega uh, there is a certain trick to it is we know that by the fact that v dot is going to be less than or equal to 0 we know that v is non increasing v of x t is less than or equal to v x 0 ok and suppose I call say this is some constant c ok ok so this is some constant c all right now remember also uh, well i have only semi definiteness positive semi definiteness but suppose v is uh, by positive definiteness i can of course do a few things uh, but let me see let me see so what i will typically do is i will say that my omega is the set of x1 x2 i'm going to make this bigger is this uh, set of x1 x2 in the domain such that uh, v of yeah fine i will just say x in the domain such that vx okay so that vx is less than or equal to c so let's let me use the x0 okay actually i should not use this either. yeah uh, i know this is getting a bit complicated but just try to follow my argument it is very important when applying lasalle invariance to be able to define these sets very carefully okay so that's why i am putting a little bit of effort huh? it's obvious that this domain is fine i hope you're okay yeah because my only aim with the domain was to be able to include both the equilibrium because I want to use Lasalle invariance so there has to be a multiple limit points yeah if I just take the bottom one and use minus pi to pi I do not even have the top guy so it is I mean I am not int so intrigued by it yeah and Lasalle invariance does not do anything special and x2 can be in anything in R now my problem is that this domain is not bounded therefore I cannot use that as an omega but I know that v is less than or equal to c for all time because i from my vx0 okay from my vx0 so if i define my set as this guy then this is an invariant set i hope that's evident to you yeah because if i start anywhere in omega vx will be less than or equal to c and if vx is less than or equal to c then it will remain less than or equal to c for all time 
therefore I remain in the set omega because set omega is defined using this. Okay. Okay. So if I take any point in this set, v will be less than or equal to c, and it and as I propagate it through the dynamical equations, it will remain less than or equal to c, which means I am still within this set. Okay. And by the way, such an omega set exists. Very simple because uh, because for positive definite functions you have class K function dominated and so on and so forth. Very easy to construct. In this exact specific case, I just this is I just have to solve this guy. Hmm? Okay, that's very easy. I will give you a conservative estimate. I just want uh, x two from from here. From here, I just want x two to be what? Can anybody tell me if I need to satisfy this? What should be the bound on x two? What is the largest value x two can take? Huh? Under root two c? Absolutely. Why? Because forget the contribution of this term. This is whatever. This is non-negative. It will be maximum two k minimum. Uh, whatever zero, minimum zero, maximum two k. So take the minimum value zero, and then x two is un has to be less than under root two c. Okay, because x two square by two is less than equal to c. <coughs> Done. So I got my and by the way, this is an absolute value. So, मतलब because there was a square. So when I took the square root, it is an absolute value, which means x two is x two has to be between minus root two c and plus root two c. Huh? Done. My my omega set is very straightforward in this case. Then omega is exactly equal to minus two pi comma two pi cross minus root two c root two c. Yeah, very easy. I just use the same logic. So I have constructed my omega. Now. The Lyapunov, whatever, the, not the directional derivative is too simple. You already have done this before. If I take the derivative of this, I will get x two x two dot and k sine x one x one dot. Basically, this term and that term will cancel out, and I will be left with v dot is just minus c x two squared. Okay, so. Uh, V dot is negative semi-definite, right? Why is it negative semi-definite? It can be zero whenever you know only x two is zero. X one is arbitrary, so basically whenever all states don't appear in any function, <coughs> cannot be definite. Right? It's only negative semi-definite. Okay, so it satisfies the two requirements of the Lassalle invariance. V is positive semi-definite. V dot is negative semi-definite. Excellent. I have constructed the invariant set omega in which I am starting. That's also done. Now I have to construct the set E. What is the set E? It's the set set of states in omega such that v dot is exactly zero. What is that set? In this case, where is v dot exactly zero? When x two equal to zero, so this is actually all the points of the form alpha comma zero, hmm? and alpha of course I have to be careful because I am still in the invariant set. So alpha belongs to minus two pi, two pi. Yeah, because I am still in the invariant set omega. Obviously, alpha still belongs to minus two pi, two pi. Hmm? Now I want to find the largest. Invariant set M inside E. This is the complicated part. Okay, uh, and I don't think I have enough time to do that now. Huh? We will do this in the next class. Okay, but we'll continue with this example in the next class. Of course, I'll re, uh, recap a little bit. But I hope you've seen how we start by constructing an omega. uh which of course has to be closed and bounded huh? can contain multiple equilibria that's what we have and we already have shown v is positive semi definite v dot is negative semi definite 
Okay. Remember the V chosen was very simple energy of the system, which like I said, dynamical systems folks absolutely love. They don't like to hunt for you know, more complicated Lyapunov functions. You know, backstepping type Lyapunov functions will be a completely no no for them because uh, the typical question would be uh, your Lyapunov function adds position and velocity. What does it even mean in the real world? How can you add position and velocity? So, so, so there are many points there. So anyway, uh, uh, remember that we have more or less constructed lot of the ingredients. The only quantity left to compute is m. Okay, starting invariant set done. Ending invariant set is the only thing we need to compute. Okay, all right. We'll do that in the next class. Okay, great. Thank you.